Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.46 a.m. Central Time, and I am recording this in preparation for the market day of January the 13th, 2015. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's dive right in. First order of business, we'll go to our morning report. A couple things to keep in mind here. Indices across the board were relatively bullish in the overnight, running about 0.4%, and, and really nothing standing out, all four of them about the same. Perhaps the biggest news of the evening, crude oil continues to be just destroyed, down 3.28%, about $1.50. Uh, so, as of the time this snapshot was taken, uh, crude oil sees no bottom in sight. Uh, in terms of our other commodity that we follow in the overnight gold, gold was up 0.46, so about the same as the, the action from the general broad indices. Euro is down 0.3. In terms of our overseas markets that we follow, uh, what many would call some of the seven sisters. China, uh, really no change to speak of. Hong Kong was up more, about 0.8. Uh, Japan down about 0.6, so quite a bit of difference between those two markets. Europe in general was up nicely, a little bit more bullish than were our own indices in the overnight action. In terms of the macroeconomic reports last night, And the key U.S. markets, obviously, we've got uh, U.S. Treasury budget data, as well as the JOLTS, the Labor Department's Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey, scheduled to be released. We also have, um, really, the kickoff of earnings week. So, so key companies to be aware of, you've got uh, CSX which is CSX Corporation, Dragon Wave, KB Home, Progress Software, PRGS. Um, tomorrow morning before the open, you got JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. So um, really starting the earnest in earnest, the earnings season. So that will also play into, in effect, your macroeconomic reports as uh, we take a reading on how some of these key companies are doing and how they may affect their key industry segments. In terms of our market conditions, from a volatility standpoint, um, obviously with yesterday's weakness, we saw some uptick and the short term VIX is now 18.20. Uh, in general though, the, the story of yesterday is just uh, neutral. I, this is could not be more evenly balanced. Uh, between the bulls and the bears, we are across a whole bunch of our different uh, measures, um, just about as neutral as you can be. Here you see historical IV percentiles. Look at this, 50, 53, 53, 44 across the four indices. Now, at the same time we say that, we've seen this clear uptrick in the um, standard deviation moves each day. And indeed, we've got eight days in a row now where the S&P has had at least a one standard deviation move. Um, if you look at the NASDAQ, seven of the last nine trading sessions have seen an excess of a one standard deviation move. So clearly, uh, while we don't seem to be accomplishing very much, there's a lot of volatility as the bulls and bears are battling it out inside this symmetrical triangle. If you take a look at the daily um, charts on the SPY, you'll see a symmetrical triangle and um, really no resolution to the situation there at this time. Uh, one of the things I will say about volatility, if you'll if you'll define a buy signal as a VIX close at least 20% above its 10-day moving average, um, and, and 
the thought here is that this will highlight the times of quick and extreme uncertainty. Well, obviously right now we've got stocks close to new highs, yet we've been seeing more and more of these VIX signals, kind of a curious sign of uh, nervousness that's in the marketplace at this time, uh, and not terribly um, typical for when you have um, new highs in in the in sight the last time we saw this many spikes in the VIX was in just six months was the bottom of the market in March 2009 prior to that the last we had saw this kind of a cluster was the end of 2008 just as the market was peaking so clearly our current situation is more similar to that one than it was to March of 2009 now it's kind of hard to know what to make of this in terms of action, but it's of note that uh, there's quite a bit of volatility here and a combination of market factors that are not typical. And, and that should be seen as its own kind of warning sign that things may have some level of instability and, um, and until this situation resolves itself, uh, you need to be very, very careful with the initiation of new positions and then, of course, how you manage the positions that you're already in. And let's go ahead and go to our market timing models. Indeed, um, from a market trend intermediate term phase, we still continue to be in phase three, but um, we've had some warning signs coming into that. While we've not had a, um, a clear resolution in terms of higher highs, higher lows, um, you could start to say that we've had a lower high, uh, especially if we don't follow through with some bullish action, and this doesn't uh, become seen as simply a um, you know a retracement and a primary bullish move if if we continue to pull back and this becomes a lower high um, this is um, very much uh, going to challenge the premise that we are in a, um, a phase three bull flag bull flat kind of uh, cir circumstance portfolio trader posture we are in confirmed uptrend but if you'll take a look at the active trader market posture this is where we get this decidedly neutral kind of phase um, and indeed no new intermediate term bullish or short term bullish trades are called for we've been flip flopping right around the center point totally neutral um, at the very least consider reduced position size and use caution on entering any new positions um, in terms of our position sizing opinion because of the uh, the um, uh, confirmed uptrend that gives us that 75 to 100 percent on that metric but from a volatility standpoint our VIX did pop yesterday to up over 18 so that would have us reduce our position size so somewhere between 50 to 100 um, percent of a normal position size would be called for based on these models um, at the very least though um, caution is recommended in terms of short-term mic market timing opinions one day outlook neutral three-day outlook neutral two weeks slightly bullish uh, our market forecast tools again very very neutral and the nasdaq is very bearish and you see as you look across the four indices here you know we really are centered right on top of the fence line waiting to fall one side or the other our hedge warning status remains at zero plus um, so zero being normal but we we clearly have a number of warning signs here so that's why i've elevated it half a step uh, one of the things that we want to note is that with the SPX and the rut, we have a higher high, a higher low, and currently appears to be a lower high. Um, the NASDAQ now has two lower highs and a, and a double bottom set of lows. So very, very much a concern. The NASDAQ generally drives our strong bullish trends. XLF also if you take a look at XLF we also look for the financials to uh, lead strong bull markets and, and clearly XLF has been struggling mightily in recent trading days we had a distribution day yesterday on both the SPY and the NASDAQ so again another warning sign and um, after only three days 
within the um, VIX volatility window that would make it acceptable to initiate new option income strategies, we have popped back out. So another warning sign that would say that um, these conditions are pretty unstable and very difficult to um, to forecast which direction we're going to go, bull or bear, in the next primary move. I've added um, this um, new graph to the daily report uh, from stock charts as relative rotation graph. So we'll talk more about this as we go forward. But do note that um, there's really just um, uh, three sectors that are really providing great strength though you could make a case for a couple others certainly going in the right direction. But this biotech, home construction, and semiconductor seem to be, um, you know, a particular note. So, you know, if you're going to stick your toe in the water and be aggressive with some positions, you might want to start uh, with those sectors, those industry groups. And, um, and, and dig into some of the companies that are performing best within that group. Um, indeed, our market posture by sector, very, very mixed, um, pretty sloppy all the way around. The, uh, the two that are healthy across all the time frames, consumer staples and healthcare, of course, both defensive sectors. So that should tell you something as well. Now, they've been, they've been um, consistently the two best performing sectors for a, a long time but that's still uh, we need to see we these financials for example look at this neutral down down we need to see the financials really step up if we're going to um, to take off uh, obviously you can be relatively stronger and yet at the same time um, still be down. So even yesterday, so healthcare was down, consumer staples was down. You can lose money on a relatively stronger um, sector. So uh, it's um, certainly calling for uh, preservation of capital. While we're certainly not in an elevated hedge warning status, um, it's just a really poor set of circumstances to be initiating new trades. Um, top five industry groups, again, retail, railroads, healthcare, transportation, internet, same five continue to dominate the top of our um, industry group rankings as um, portrayed by Shadow Trader. So uh, enough time today. Uh, obviously, if you like what we're doing, the kind of information that we're providing to you, please like us. Please provide comments. Um, you can provide comments on our Facebook page. And, of course, as always, you can send us emails at support at falconglobaltraders.com. We welcome your comments and feedback. More information about our products can be found at falconglobaltraders.com. And, of course, as always, the two-week free trials are available in each of the three live trading rooms. Disclaimers are here. Just hit pause if you need more time to review this in depth. And as always, we greatly appreciate uh, your contributions to what we're doing here in the Falcon Global trading community. Um, good trading and good luck.